If North Korea launches an attack that threatens the U.S., China should stay neutral. But if Washington or South Korea strikes first, Beijing will step in and stop them. That's the word from one of China's most influential state newspapers, The Global Times, on Friday. And China, meanwhile, has condemned Trump's fire and fury remarks. Beijing warned the U.S. president against playing with fire over North Korea. It said any accidental spark could trigger a conflict. What's more, Chinese state media reports the country will protect the North Korean regime if indeed the U.S. decides to strike first. If he does something in Guam, it will be an event the likes of which nobody's seen before. What the president is saying is making it much more challenging for us to have a successful end to this crisis. There is nothing incoherent about what is being presented by the United States government. It's plain chicken on a geopolitical scale. Cry wolf often enough, pretty soon you don't have any credibility. President Trump has refused to back down on his threat to bring fire and fury to North Korea amid global calls for de-escalation. RT's Jacqueline Vuka picks up the story. Frankly, uh, the people that were questioning that statement, was it too tough? Maybe it wasn't tough enough. North Korea does not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. It's a very terrifying question. What could possibly be more intense than fire and fury? When Trump was asked, he just ominously responded with, you'll see. But it is clear that he has no plans to back down whatsoever. It's not a dare. It's a statement. It has nothing to do with dare. That's a statement. But this isn't all about alliances. As Reuters correspondent Ben Blanchard explains, Beijing is looking after number one. China would presumably see any attack by North Korea uh, that originates in North Korea as, as, as provocative. Frankly, if North Korea does something this stupid, then they kind of get what, they're, what, what they deserve. On the other hand, if the attack came from Washington or, or Seoul, then presumably that would cause a collapse of North Korea. Any collapse of North Korea would send a flood of destabilizing refugees into northeastern China and also potentially end up with a reunified Korean Peninsula that is allied with the United States and therefore you would have US troops along the Chinese border. That is something China really does not want to see. According to Friday's editorial, Beijing will come down hard on any side who wants to change the status quo in areas where China's interests are concerned. So how would China react if the US or South Korea fired first? Possibly what would happen is that the Chinese may end up, uh, end up sending their own troops into North Korea, potentially, simply to make sure that the country doesn't collapse, to ensure that you don't have this wave of uh, refugees going into northeastern China. But also China's other worry would be to secure the nuclear weapons that do exist in North Korea. China would not want a small band of members of the old government running around with a handful of nuclear weapons uh, in the event of a collapse scenario in North Korea because these nuclear weapons could just as easily be aimed at a Chinese city as at South Korea, the United States or Japan. China may have its own ideas about how to act in the event of a war, but according to the Global Times, it can't prevent one. In the words of Friday's editorial, Beijing is not able to persuade Washington or Pyongyang to back down at this time. Now, the possibility of military confrontation is causing a split among America's allies. Australia says it will stand shoulder to shoulder with Washington, but New Zealand says it's not ready to support any aggressive military action. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the United States. The ANZUS Treaty means that if America is attacked, we will come to their aid. If Australia is attacked, the Americans will come to our aid. We are joined at the hip. The American alliance is the bedrock of our national security. Committing to an aggressive response now, while encouraging all involved to avoid escalation, 
is not a position we want to take. Nuclear tensions are being said to be at a new high. North Korea's news agency is saying that. They say President Trump is driving the situation on the North Korean peninsula to, quote, the brink of nuclear war. President Trump responding on Twitter saying, quote, military solutions are now fully in place, locked and loaded. We have these breaking developments covered around the globe, starting with CNN's Will Ripley. He is live in Beijing with the latest. Will? Brianna, there is this new statement coming out of North Korea just within the last hour or so from KCNA, their state media. I want to read you two portions of it. The first one, it says President Trump is driving the situation on the Korean Peninsula to the brink of a nuclear war, making such outcries as the U.S. will not rule out a war against the DPRK. And then they talk a lot about the history, because in North Korea, the Korean War from 1950 to 1953 influences nearly every aspect of people's lives. Three million people died on the peninsula in just three years of fighting before the armistice agreement that ended it all. But North Korea tells its citizens that the U.S. is ready to attack again at any time. The second portion of the statement reading, quote, all these facts go to prove that the U.S. is indeed the mastermind of the nuclear threat, the heinous nuclear war fanatic. So President Trump's remarks really do play into the longstanding North Korean narrative that the United States is their enemy and that their government is justified in spending much of its money developing missiles at the expense of things like electricity, nutritious food, and clean water for their people. Also here in the region, tensions continue uh, and uh, really harken back to the Cold War in some ways. As you look at this headline uh, from the Pacific Daily News, the newspaper there in Guam, 14 minutes. That is the time that Guam Homeland Security says it would take for a North Korean missile to travel 2,100 miles and reach that 210 square mile island, home to more than 160,000 American citizens. Homeland Security in Guam also putting out bulletins for people telling them advice about what to do in the event of a missile attack such as do not look at the flash or fireball those are chilling words but we do need to remember at this point this is only a war of words this is escalating rhetoric but we have not seen any indications as of uh, this morning of north korean preparations for a missile launch uh, at least not uh, imminent chris well, what are you picking up uh, in terms of the response to the president's tweet just this morning on our watch saying that military options are locked and loaded. North Koreans will take that seriously, uh, and what we really need to watch uh, is there are their actions in the coming days, because North Korea said earlier in the week that they will present a plan to uh, pull off, if, if they actually go through with it, it would be their most provocative missile test ever, launching four uh, Hwasong-12 ballistic missiles, simultaneously flying them over Japan and down within 20 miles of Guam. If they did that, it would be highly provocative. It would certainly escalate tensions in the region uh, in a month that is already a tense month because of the regularly scheduled joint military drills between the United States and South Korea, not as a result of the, the latest tensions. They were due to kick off anyway, but they always enrage Pyongyang, and it's usually a time when that country likes to show force. But we have to reiterate, uh, North Korea has this arsenal uh, as a deterrent. Officials there have told me repeatedly they don't want to use these weapons, Chris, but they say they're not afraid to do so if the United States were to strike first.